let's face it, our home planet is not well. Like humans, its health needs to be checked from time to time, or in geological terms, from epoch to epoch. I am a microbiologist. I am also an educator and a scientist who studies the ecology and biotechnology of microorganisms, tiny little creatures which can give us not only fatal diseases, but also a spectrum of benefits. Microorganisms are usually invisible to the naked eye, but they play vital roles within our bodies and our ecosystems, from ecological processes to health. Now, let us proceed to the health check of the most important patient that we should all be concerned about, our home planet, Earth. Just like a usual health check, let's first dig on what we can consider as the historical health records of our planet. Looking through the geological records of the Earth, we usually take reference from paleontological and evolutionary evidences. Each period in the lifetime of our planet is defined by the organisms that dominated life on its surface. In the Ordovician period, it has been mollusks and fishes that rule the world in the water surrounding Gondwan, the southern half of the ancient supercontinent Pangaea. The Mesozoic era, with the Jurassic period being the most popular, Earth gave home to dinosaurs whose extinction is believed to have been caused by an asteroid that led to the cooling of the Earth, or what we call the impact winter. The most recent geological diagnosis is called the Holocene. This is where species called humans began to rule the planet. If we look at the geological time scale, we can diagnose a familiar pattern. In each epoch, a certain species evolves, dominates, then eventually becomes extinct. Through periods of time, Earth has been a witness and a key player to all these evolutionary phenomena. The existing life forms and the prevailing conditions of the planet have been central to the fate of the dominant organisms. And if you may have wondered, yes, we are the dominant species of today and we are not exempted from being extinct. Today, we live in a geological time dominated by our kind, the Homo sapiens. And just like dinosaurs and all of the other organisms who came before us, we still live on the same planet that became sick in the previous epochs. Yes. Diagnosis in the past decades show that our planet has been sick and is hanging on a thread. Now, are you curious about what the diagnosis fell about its causes? Sad to say, but yes, it's true. It is us, humans. Let us now consider the atomic bombings in Nagasaki and Hiroshima. These events demonstrate how much power our species possess, and its associated harm on the planet. Experts believe that events like this led to the birth of a new chapter, focused on the impacts of our activities on the planet, its climate and ecosystems, the Anthropocene. While some may argue that the Anthropocene began during the Industrial Revolution, the atomic bombs of Nagasaki and Hiroshima are glaring demonstrations of the true power of the human species and its ability to cause damage on Earth. The resounding identity of this current epoch. The events following World War II marked a period of recovery. Humans were ready to rebuild the society they have torn into pieces to refocus their energy to the new world order, to raise families, to end hunger and suffering brought about by war, to bring prosperity and to catalyze development across the globe. 
And so they did, exhibiting once again the power of the human will. The world was witness to the new ways of human life. There was an increase in life expectancy and improvement in child mortality rate in the 50s up to the present. Today, our species has reached milestones in health, medicine, science, agriculture, and many other disciplines. We can actually name a number of positive ways humans have improved for their benefit. But at what expense? All these conveniences enjoyed by these dominant species are being extracted from Earth. In the process of achieving milestones, humans have also caused a change in the state of natural ecosystems of the present, displaying yet again their power and introducing what is regarded as the repercussions of the Anthropocene, disruption. This would come from various forms of human activities. To name a few, massive non-renewable energy consumption like fossil fuels, irresponsible water use, fertilizer consumption and plastic pollution. Along with the increase in GDP and rise in population, humans made impacts to ecology or in our terms, the health of the planet. The Anthropocene has indeed arrived, bringing disruption and posing threat to human health and existence. We have become parasites in our own home. And Earth's death is just around the corner. And just like any other parasites, we will be obliterated when our host dies. These disruptions brought about by the Anthropocene continue to affect the Earth's health. And as we are experiencing today, it is now affecting human health too. We are now experiencing impacts on human health brought about by and made worse by unhealthy environmental conditions. To name a few, cardiovascular and respiratory diseases are linked to excessive heat and other environmental conditions. The emergence of zoonosis, or those diseases that can be transferred from animals to humans, have links to disturbances of forest ecosystems. Infectious diseases, including COVID-19, are linked by scientists to the destruction of the integrity of ecosystem and biodiversity loss. If you are noticing a pattern there, yes, these are feedbacks from the environment brought about by human activities. Thanks to research, we are now able to see these patterns and predict to a certain degree, future scenarios and outcomes. These are the signs of the times of the Anthropocene, mostly made by humans, now being experienced by humans. Thus, the health of the planet must also be the responsibility of humans. In 2015, the Rockefeller Foundation Lancet Commission on Planetary Health marked the birth of planetary health as a global and scientific movement. It is a field focused on characterizing human health impacts of human caused disruptions of Earth's natural systems and providing solutions. Planetary health, if we take it literally, talks about the planet, health, and humans. But more importantly, it also speaks of solutions. In essence, it involves a transdisciplinary approach of dealing with the health of the planet and, in, and its impacts on humans, and vice versa. If this still sounds a little nerdy to you, then we'll dig deeper. It just simply says that in order to solve the problems we have, we need to understand the interconnections of various systems on the planet, including human activities. It requires recalibration of human actions, a new perspective, a time for a great transition. Now, can we actually cure the planet through planetary health? Well, that may sound too noble, 
But ensuring planetary health requires sparking conversations in various disciplines. But in concrete terms, this can be achieved by rethinking how we produce and consume things, even the clothes we wear today. We need to reimagine how cities are built and how we extract and manage the natural resources of our planet. For decades, we have been used to addressing problems in ecology using only an ecological mindset, problems in health using only the health perspective, problems in agriculture using only the agricultural framework, and so on and so forth. Planetary health's call for transition is about innovation across fields of human knowledge and practice and collaborating across social dimensions. Humans need to blur the lines, integrate and synergize as we maximize our capacity and time as the dominant species. Through this, our kind can be remembered as the organisms who manage to care about the planet's health. Second, only to their convenience. In our diagnosis, we learned that we are actually dealing with two patients. We are dealing with the unhealthy human and the equally unhealthy planet. They say it takes a village to raise a child. We say it takes everyone to make the planet healthy. Planetary health is still in its infancy stage in the Philippines. Yet, there are a number of individuals and organizations championing this in the country. But institutionalization remains as a demand. From my experience, the academe or any other educational institution could be a promising venue to cultivate and promote planetary health as a field of study through creating initiatives, programs, and courses that highlight its importance and applicability. Los Banos, as the special science and nature city, has all the potentials to be the mecca to orientate citizens who can apply the preaching of planetary health. Since the onset of the pandemic, one of the turning points that opened our eyes to claiming to be the dominant species can actually fire back. I have actively participated in this pursuit by crafting initiatives to introduce the planetary health agenda in our programs. The first of its kind in the Philippines or even possibly in Asia. In fact, a graduate program, a research initiative and a community capacity building project are being organized as we speak. While conversations on planetary health have been around for a few years, there are only a number of Filipinos who are aware that this field and movement exists. More seeds of planetary health in the Philippines need to be planted. Those seeds could very well be you, whom I share the screen with today. But it doesn't end there. Providing solutions to planetary health problems of today requires bringing planetary health closer to the people and their practices not just university education, but also in research, public service, community building, policy, co-creation and participation, to name a few. Looking at world problems using the planetary health lens exposes aspects that would otherwise be left hidden. Now, what could be the best prescription for this planetary health diagnosis? I say, be the seeds for the planet. The seeds who are prepared for the next disasters, environmental challenges, economic crises, and pandemics. Future-proofing the community is necessary to upgrade the way we live in the time of disruption. The now normal. That is why participation in fora like this one, joining discussions on current issues of the world, participating in local community initiatives, creating education and research programs, and developing innovations are essential in birthing a new breed of Filipinos. 
the Filipino planetary health citizens. I encourage everyone to devote time to examine our activities. Ask yourselves, am I a planetary health citizen? How do my activities impact the health of the planet? In the life of the world to come, humanity is still bound to leave wounds in our home planet. But of course, we would not want our epoch to be remembered as a time when the dominant species who are considered to have reached the highest form of intelligence in history was not able to do anything for the planet's survival. We do not have to wait for another Yolanda or the emergence of another pandemic or the dis disappearance of some of our islands or even another threat of a great extinction event for our species to realize that being dominant does not exempt us from the ills brought upon by that same dominance. It's time for a planetary health check, but more than getting our planet's health checked, we need concrete actions. And that begins with planetary health.